all right carrying on uh, with the uh, applications of the central limit theorem as we covered uh, in the previous lectures uh, how the central limit theorem can be used to make estimates about the population using a sample and how uh, the sampling distribution follows a normal uh, a normal curve and with the sample standard deviation how we can actually calculate the standard uh, deviation of the sampling distribution now the sampling distribution standard deviation which is the standard deviation between the sample means it is also called the standard error of the mean or the error or the likely deviation from uh, the population mean that we are able to estimate if we have the standard deviation of either the population or the sample right the sample standard deviation we can calculate the standard error of the mean by dividing the sample standard deviation by the under root of n where n is simply the number of observations in the sample that we take in so i'm going to move on to a comparison or an exercise right so thought experiment again supposing we extract a sample which has a mean of 30 and the sample standard deviation is 2 the sample size that we've extracted has 50 observations right the question over here is can such a sample be extracted from a population with a mean of 32 and are we 95% sure right so what does this actually mean uh, the uh, the question is asking that assuming that i have a population with a mean of 32 a population with almost an infinite number of observations or a very large number of observations i randomly select so it has to be a simple random sample i randomly select 50 observations i pull them out from the population this sample has can this sample then have a mean which is 30 right and a standard deviation which is 2 can this such a sample actually be extracted from a population of mean 32 or not right so how do i actually go ahead and solve this so assumption is that if we look at uh, the central limit theorem which tells us that irrespective of the population so this is the population if i extract samples from this population right the samples the mean of the samples will follow a normal distribution where the mean of the sample means right so this mean will approach the population mean and the standard deviation of the sample means is going to be the standard error right so this is the standard error over here right and this will tell us what by how likely is the actual population mean to lie around you know standard deviation around the uh, sample mean so in uh, this case we can say there is a 95% probability that if the sample means is mu right the actual population mean lies 1.96 standard deviations plus minus from this population mean uh, from the sample mean and standard deviation in this case is the standard error of the mean or 1.96 standard errors now in the exercise that we have we've got only one sample which is of uh, size 50 so can i say this is actually let's say 10 samples of five observations each right in this case with the 10 samples can i construct a sampling distribution of course i can it's thought experiment right so assuming that this is not one sample of 50 observations this is 10 samples of uh, five observations each and we have the sa sample standard deviation as 2 then what would be the standard deviation of these uh, 10 sample means is going to be the standard error of the mean so we have a formula for that right so we don't actually have to go ahead and simulate uh, you know 10 samples of 5 each we can simply calculate the standard error using the formula which is sample standard deviation divided by under root n so in this case we have sample standard deviation as 2 size is equal to 50 and the hypothesis mean is 30 right so i'm going to start off with a new sheet again right the sample mean is 50 sorry sample mean is is 30 number of observations is 50 sample standard deviation is denoted by small s which is equal to 2 sigma denotes the population standard deviation we don't have this population standard deviation we have only the sample standard deviation and in most cases we will always have the sample mean and not the population mean so the standard error of the mean in our estimate 
will be the standard deviation divided by the under root of the uh, observation number of observations. So this will be two divided by under root of fifty. Now to make a calculation easier and uh, to avoid getting into too much decimals, I'm just going to assume the under root of fifty is seven because seven sevens are forty nine. So instead of seven point one, we'll just assume it's two by seven. So standard error is two by seven. Now. Assuming this is the standard error, now what the popular the central limit theorem tells us is that if I extract samples, let me get this a little better. Let's try it. Sorry. So if I extract multiple samples, right? The sample means will follow a normal distribution with the mean of the sample means approaching the population mean. So hypothesized population mean is 30, and I've got the standard error as 2 by 7. Therefore, in 95% of the cases, right, the samples that I extract will be within 1.96 times the standard error plus minus from the population mean, right? So that means if I go 1.96 standard error over here, SE. And I go 1.96 standard errors over here. This will give me the upper limit and the lower limit within which 95% of the samples that I extract will lie. Right? The sample that I have extracted has a mean of 32. How likely is this? Uh, sorry, the, uh, the sample mean. So I've actually got it wrong. So instead of 30, the population mean was 32. So no matter. So what we are saying is that if the population mean is 32, the samples will 95% of the cases will lie 1.96 standard errors plus or minus from this 32, and I have actually gone ahead and extracted a sample mean of 30. How likely is this to happen? Is this within the 1.96 standard errors from the population mean or not? Right. So applying this, so let's say so this gives me 32 plus minus 1.96. Into two by seven, right? So let's uh, make it a little more easier. This is only an exercise. Thirty plus thirty-two plus minus two into two by seven, which comes out to be. Let me just pull up the calculator so that we are all uh, we don't make a silly mistake. So here we go. So four divided by seven gives me. 0.57. So 32 plus minus 0.57. So in 90, 95% of the cases, these samples will lie plus minus 0.57 from here. So this gives me actually 32.57 as this point over here, and this will actually be 31.43. So in 91%, 95% of the cases. The samples that we extract from a population of mean 32, right, are going to lie between 31.43 and 32.57, and not, as the presentation is suggesting, a mean 30. So, the probability of extracting a sample with a mean 30 and a given standard deviation 2, size 50, from a population with mean 32. Is extremely unlikely. It is less than five uh, percent. So, ninety-five percent of the cases, this will not happen. So, we've, we've actually over here we've deployed the central limit theorem to refute the fact that such an event can occur within a ninety-five percent probability range. Right? And this is an example of how we have applied the central limit theorem to figure out how likely a certain event is to happen. And conversely, we can also assume that supposing this event has happened. That I have, in fact, extracted a a sample with a mean 30. So that means the population from which the sample has come in is unlikely to have a mean of 32, right? And this is the heart of hypothesis theorem because we always know what is the sample measurement. We don't know the population measurement. So looking at this sample measurement, post facto, assuming the event is post facto that I have landed up with a sample which has mean 30 and standard deviation 2. This has happened. Then the probability that the population has a hypothesized mean of 32 is extremely unlikely. You know, it is not within the 95% probability range given the sample that I have extracted.
right and now we go be looking at this experiment and this thought experiment we are now going to move on to a related uh, exercise which is hypothesis testing and this is going to build up on all our previous lectures including the types of variables uh, you know probability distributions and most importantly the central limit theorem uh, and uh, for hypothesis testing while uh, certain if you were not clear with the the central limit theorem you're going to find it very difficult to follow the uh, the statistics behind hypothesis testing so again i reiterate please re go through the lectures go through all the exercises that are mentioned in the exercises section before actually going on with hypothesis testing lectures